Hello, boys and girls. You have seen some of your teachers wearing this uniform every Wednesday. I'm wearing this uniform today because I'm a scout leader. Today, we are going to learn to pronounce vowel u and u sounds to construct wh questions and to use 10 new words related to the topic when making arrangements. I have sent out a patrol to visit their patrol leader's grandmother to offer their service and also to find out something related to her culture. The patrol will be sharing their experience through their videos which I will share with you after this. That message must be from Naim. Naim is my patrol leader and he has taken his patrol to visit his grandmother in Malacca. We will check Naim's messages later. Before that, let's look at some of these superstitions. Shall we read them together? I want you to recall where you might have heard each superstition. The first one is sitting on a pillow will cause you to get balls on your head. Ouch! Singing while cooking in the kitchen will make you end up with a much older spouse later in life. Ooh. Whistling indoors invite demons. Opening umbrella indoors bring bad luck. If you have itchy hands, you can expect to get some money soon. Can you recall the first time you heard any of these superstitions? Well, I can. I was around 12 years old. My grandmother told me that if I kept singing in the kitchen, one day I would marry a very old spouse. That was terrifying for a 12-year-old. Of course, I stopped singing instantly. But I did not want to marry someone as old as my great-grandmother. That was the image I had of a very old woman at 12 years old. As I become older, I learned that the superstitions in our Malaysian culture are helpful and rather effective too. Let's watch a video on superstitions compiled by Naim and his patrol members. We will find out more about this topic. Our first day in Malacca started off very well. We listed some of the activities that we could do at Opa's house. We split the patrol into three smaller groups. Thomas and his team cleaned the kitchen area. Ravin's team took care of Opa's garden and my team cleaned Opa's living room. Opa had all her cleaning tools ready for us to do our community service so it was not really a trouble. We had cleaning detergents, pails, mops, brushes, long brooms, and feather dusters. My team worked from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. before we stopped to rest. The first thing we did was to bring down all the curtains for washing. Amin and Lisa swept the floor clean and put the curtains into the washing machine. While waiting for the curtains to be washed, they swept the ceilings and floor. I changed all the cushion covers and wiped Opa's coffee table and her huge oriental vase using the cleaning cloth. We wore face masks and covered our heads 
with our scarves too, teacher. Within one hour, the living room was spotless. Opa was also there to supervise us. Amin was reminded not to whistle. Opa said, whistling in the house could invite demons into the house. We made sure Amin did not whistle anymore because we were so scared that we would not be able to sleep that night. Hi teacher, my team consists of Raju and Catherine. We helped Naim's grandmother to clean the kitchen. It wasn't a huge kitchen, so we managed to complete our duties by 11.15 a.m. We were so impressed by Opa's brass collection and her cooking utensils. They were so different from what we usually see in our own kitchen. We were quite bored, so Catherine sang a song from our campfire night while helping Opa to stir her famous durian jam. We were told that when she was a teenager, her mother would never let her sing in the kitchen. She was so scared that if she had disobeyed her mother, she would end up marrying a very old man. I think that's hilarious. That can't be true, right, Miss Lily? Hi, Miss Lily. My team had a whale of a time. While the other two teams were cleaning in the house, we cleaned the compound. Michaelia rearranged the flower pots and watered the plants. I cleaned the porch area and raked the dried leaves to the burning area. Naim's grandmother's compound looks really neat now. We could also smell the aroma of a delicious durian jam. That really motivated us to do our part faster. Some plants needed repotting, so we helped to do that too. I really wish you are here with us, Miss Lily. Michaelia opened the antique lacy umbrella in the shade and walked her way into the kitchen. You are not going to believe Opa's facial expression when she saw Michaelia with the beautiful umbrella in her kitchen. She said that we are not supposed to carry an open umbrella in the house. I don't understand this, Miss Lily. Could you please explain? It sounded like the patrol have some questions. How do we form questions? They sound familiar, right? Let me help you recall them. WH question stands for all the words we use when asking questions. Of course, except for the letter H, for the word how. In the English language, there are seven WH questions. Who, what, when, why, which, where, and how. Who is used when you want to find out about a person or people. Who has a grandmother in Malacca? This question wants to find out the name of the person who has a grandmother in Malacca. Ah, we do know who has a grandmother in Malacca. Yes, everyone. The answer is naive. Can you make your own question using who? Look at the next example. This question uses the word who, but it's incorrect. Can you please rearrange the words so that the question is correct? Children, whose superstitions in culture tells usually about our? Answer. Who usually tells children about superstitions in our culture? Let's look at the next word, what. We use what to find out about something like someone's name 
for instance, what is your name? To ask for repetition or confirmation like, what? I can't hear you. And to find out the reason like, what did you do that for? Let's do these practices. Choose the correct question. Practice one. What were some of the utensils that the scout members used to clean the living room? Is this question correct? Did I hear you say yes? Well done! Let's try another one. Practice two. I can hear you what? Well, this sounds familiar, right? But is this the correct way to use what in a question? How can we correct this question? The correct structure is what? I can't hear you. Let's try one more. Practice three. What did Opa do that for? Well, is that question correct? Good job, students! Now, it's time we move on to the next word, when. Speaking of time, we use when in a question to find out about time. Look at this example. When did the scouts leave their homes to go to Malacca? Do you want to practice saying this question? Come on, don't be shy. Repeat the questions when the words turn green. When we want to know the position of something or a location, we use the word where. Look at this question. Where can I find the sponge and the detergent to clean the bathroom wall? Here are some possible answers. Would you like to choose one that gave you the correct answer? A. The shed. B. Scrubbing. The answer must be A. The shed because it is a location. Scrubbing is an activity so that cannot be the correct answer. Why is another word that can be used to ask for reason besides what? Look at this question. Why did Naim's grandmother, Opa, forbid the girl from opening an umbrella in the house? When you see the word why in a question, you will get the cue that the question requires you to give a reason. Can you think of an answer for that question? Here are some words to help you form your reason. Believe, bring, bad luck. Sample answer, Naim's grandmother forbade the girl from opening an umbrella in the house because there is a belief that it could bring bad luck. Now, we shall learn how to form a question using the word which. If you are asked to choose your preference, you will be asked questions that begin with the word which. Look at these questions. Which area of the house would you like to clean? Which broom should I use to sweep the floor? Can you give possible answers for these questions? Give it a try! Here are my suggested answers. What are yours? The next word that we are going to learn today is the only word that does not start with the letter W. It starts with the letter H. How. The word how is used for two purposes in a question. To ask about manner and to ask about quality or 
condition. I have some examples to show you. Look at these examples. How was the durian jam? How did the petrol clean the living room? How many boys were there in the eagle petrol? Can you form your own question using the word how? Let's set the timer. Make two questions using the word how in one minute. Are you ready? Hello, Miss Lily. Hello. Hi, you must be Opa. Yes, I am Saleha, Naim's grandmother. But my grandchildren call me Opa. Thank you for having the scouts at your house. I hope they were no trouble for you. Oh, don't worry. They were so helpful. In fact, I was so glad they came to do their community service here at my house. I am so glad to hear that. They have earned their merit badge for their work at your house. The scouts asked me a few questions which I think only you can answer. Would you be all right to answer some of their questions? I'll be more than glad to answer. What do they wish to know, Miss Lily? The first question is, why is it wrong to bring an open umbrella in the house? The second question is, why is it wrong to whistle in the house? The last question is, why are there many rules in a traditional Malay house? Oh, I'm glad they're curious to know. In the old days, parents used all these superstitions to teach good manners and discipline to their children. It was effective in the old days. Superstitions exist even in other households. Hence, similar rules also exist in my Chinese and Indian friends' houses. How can I explain superstitions to these teenagers, Madam Saleha? Well, you can tell them that superstitions are old beliefs and practices that were used to teach them good manners. Modern parents do not use them anymore. It's not true that opening an umbrella in the house would bring bad luck. An umbrella has many sharp edges. If they open an umbrella in a house, someone could get hurt by the sharp pointy edges. So you see, it prevents injuries and pain. Singing in the kitchen can make the person forget about the food that they are cooking. I did not marry a very elderly spouse, even though I sang a few times in my kitchen. Ha ha ha! Your explanations make so much sense now. I have never thought of that at all. Thank you so much, Madam Saleha. I appreciate your explanation and thank you for the durian jam. No problem at all, Miss Lily. My house is always open to your scouts. Bye. Bye, Madam Saleha. Just watch a video call between Opa and I. Did you hear the long and short oo sounds in the conversation? Some English words use the short vowel oo sound. Some English words use the long vowel oo sound. Let's look at some of the words that contain these sounds. Join me. Let's say these words together. You can say the words when the words turn green. Thank you. Durian jam. Food. Cooking. Superstition. Rules. Curious. Can you group them into the correct category? Separate the words that contain short vowel sound from the words that contain long vowel sound. 
I have a practice for these sounds. Look at this exercise. These words either contain the long or the short vowel sounds. Could you write the missing letters in these words? You have one minute to solve this. I will set the timer for you. Ha! Let's check. Here are the answers. T O O L S tools. U T E N S I L S utensils. R O O M room. B R O O M broom D U T I E S duties W O U L D or C O U L D would or could T R U E true did you notice that the letters that make either the long U sound or the short U sound are not always similar? Just look at these two words, true and broom. The spelling in the word true, U-E, produces the U sound just like the spelling in the word broom. Double O spelling in the word broom also produces the long O sound. We have come to an exciting segment, the speaking practice segment. In this segment, you will make arrangements using all the words that you have learned in this topic. It will be a good idea to have someone with you to practice with because it takes two to tangle in this practice. Imagine that you are making arrangements to do your community service for your uniform's bodies. This is the time to practice WH questions. Pronounce the short and long U sounds correctly and to expand your vocabulary. Are you ready? Come on, don't be shy. You can do this. Let's look at the cues. Some cues start with WH questions. Some are responses. Let me give you some time to copy these cues. Where shall we go? What do you want to do? Let's do or go. What time does? Where shall we meet? Anyone who needs a lift can. I am willing to volunteer. I'll see you outside. Someone may need to. Which transport are we? Why isn't Emily? Here are some words and phrases to help you out in your practice. Co-curricular activities Uniform body Healthy List Make a call Married badge It's okay if you need to write your dialogues. Go ahead, please do so. Sometimes we need to plan what to say. That is a start. Once you are comfortable with the structures, then you can be more spontaneous in a speaking practice. Let me give you some time to copy the phrases and words. You can take a picture of the screen. Let's recap what you have learned from this lesson. You have learned how to form WH questions and know the purposes of asking the questions. Pronounce short and long U sounds. 
practice making arrangements using WH questions and words learned from the videos. You have come a long way, boys and girls. Excellent work, everybody. The last segment for today's lesson is Tongue Trouble segment. I have some lines and tongue twisters to help you practice the oo sounds, both short and long sounds. Here they are. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Can you say the short oo sound for me? Say oo. Say put. Now say foot. In this example, just because there are two O's in the word foot, it does not mean that you have to use a long oo sound. Now say boot. Say Q. You use a long oo sounds for both words. Here are some lines for us to say together. Luke stood while he cooked a stew. I would pull the pages in the cookbook. Now, let us say this tongue twister. We will say this slowly first, then we will pick up the pain. Okay? A Tudor who tooted the flute tried to tutor two tutors to toot. Say the two to the Tudor. Is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? Now, let's say this faster. Are you ready? We will say this together. One, two, three. A tutor who tutored the flute tried to tutor two tutors to toot. Say the two to the tutor. Is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? Ha! We have come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for staying till the end. Keep practicing and don't, don't give up. See you soon. Bye-bye.